back to the Independent Investor Channel. I'm on a, a few hour hiatus here in the middle of a uh, professional obligation that um, uh, is very, very important for a lot of you guys that uh, perhaps may be new to my channel, new to my style. I do not conform to what YouTube wants me to do. OK, uh, if you enjoy the message that I put through and I miss a week, um, don't freak out. You can follow me on other venues, uh, Twitter specifically for those small injects of keeping fresh on the conversation, because um, I hate to remind you, but uh, creating content does take a time bite uh, out of my schedule. Uh, I make time for that, but when I'm physically just not available, I, I can't do those things. You guys know that I've been off the live stream. I will be off this week uh, as well as the following week, depending on what time I get home. Uh, but uh, that, that, that's what makes me unique. Uh, and in my mind, that's the sheer definition of YouTube. I think a lot of people come on to YouTube and they'll sell an agenda, this and that. Um, I'm looking to share a story. Okay, so for before we get into this and we start talking about Hylion, which is a company that I have featured for since the beginning, and I've started doing this more frequently, probably in the last year, providing a weekly update. And I suspect that the very opportunity for somebody to download YouTube, catch a video like myself, or probably more practically get recommended to a channel like mine and say, hey, check this out. You might not even be an investor, you're going to get those tidbits of information that I think are applicable to you. Okay. I know what I'm doing. And I don't come onto YouTube and say, Hey, I'm buying shares here, which I am. Um, I'm accumulating shares here. And so are the big boys. Okay. So you're going to need to sit up and pay attention. Now for the hate that I receive uh, for covering highly on y'all can just piss off. Y'all need to spend more time doing other things with your life than focusing on me. Because here's the thing. I don't focus on you. Okay. Uh, and this is part of my realistic approach to real life. Um, you wouldn't do that to me in real life. So I'm not really sure why I consider it to be okay, or you consider it to be okay through social media to come on and say, hey, the story's dead, or you need to get on with value investing. I never did away with value investing. I'm still value investing to a T and I do it very, very heavy. And if you listen closely, pull your head out of your ass and just sit back and listen for two seconds you might actually get some real takeaway from my message because my message is solely intended for those small communities out there that like the decades of past without the complement of social media, which I suggest we're bastardizing anyway, and we're missing the whole point of sharing information that would have been made available decades ago only to the institutions, okay? These opportunities play out in the same predictable pattern. And there are people in this community like myself, Rick Schnellman, who's the uh, administrator of the Discord group, which is the finest drop point for information for highly on information outside of their website, which is the official channel for their information anywhere in the world, okay? So if you're barking up my tree, asking where I am, I'm only a singular entity, and I do want to give a, a shout out to a couple of people who have actually, I've seen more frequency on Twitter, that generates churn, it really does, and, and for the optics of a company like Hylion that I've been critical on for not providing information and going through dry, dry spills of information, um, a lot of people would be acceptive of that. I am not. Uh, and that that challenge, whether or not it's heard or not, uh, is actually much more forthcoming. Hylion's been coming out with a flood of information. Uh, I'm super stoked. Um, I can ride the stock to 50 cents, 25, I think I put on one of my clickbait thumbnails, which evidently pisses a lot of people off, merely trying to draw a distinction between the potential of this stock most everybody in their camp would look at the stock charts and say that this thing is going to 25 cents, 50 cents. Um, just like conversely, when the stock was trading at $58, nobody was talking about it going down to 250. So what do you know? What have we learned? Okay. The stock market is not as predictable as you think that it is. It's not. All you have is your opportunity to hear ideas from people, understand consensus, understand what the big institutions are doing, 
and more importantly, understanding where the paradigm shift is in the industry. But my shot out for this week, again, goes out to Silent Alert. Fantastic. He started a social media presence. Um, I have not asked for permission to promote his content, but he's a good, good guy. And it seems like to me, some of his videos, he's on his way to work throwing this down. He does that for you. <clears throat> if he makes a few bucks, he's not going to get any scrutiny for me because that's the era that we live in. Okay. A lot of people, if you want to get ahead, have to find those side hustles, have to work those primary means of employment, which I hate to break it to you, have absolutely and unequivocally nothing to do with YouTube in my particular case. I do this because I want to, okay? And I understand I'm going to have those haters out there, but I certainly do appreciate the vast majority of my followers actually appreciating the intent of what I'm trying to get down to. Uh, and, you know, in, until I can start to understand that there's hundreds and hundreds of people out there that can see the same way that I do in way of opportunity, then I'll just, I'll just succumb to those, those pressures and I'll shut down the channel. The interesting portion about that is I'll have a different perspective than silent alert. I'll have a different perspective uh, from, from Andreas Rakowskis, who also is on Twitter. And I'm not going to tell you guys to follow those handles. If you want to find them through me, I follow 12 people. Um, these two are two of those 12 people. So if you want to find their handle through mine, great. You can do that. If you follow my handle, you're also going to find those photos that were released this week. Uh, some fantastic uh, photos of the Wegmans truck out in the wild, um, actually working. It was the uh, individual who snapped the content was actually in a Tesla. And I, I couldn't believe it. I, I thought, is that real or is it? Am I catching something in the right way? But the ERX just accelerated and the Tesla had a hard time actually catching up with it. And I just think it speaks to, you know, these guys are doing all the right things at the ground level. And, and what I saw from this week, it's going to be a summary of, of some of the information that I saw, uh, some of them specific to Hylion. Um, others speak to more of kind of a, a macroeconomic picture when we're talking about diesel in general and ask, answering the question of whether or not diesel can stand the test of time looking forward over the next, let's just call it 50 years, um, and or the adoption of renewable natural gas and at the accelerated pace um, or a pace that some might suggest is futile. Um, and, and I'm just not in that camp. I'm, I'm a I'm a staunch believer that renewable natural gas will have a part in the discussion. And I think it's uh, an escape to thinking to suggest otherwise. I, I'm very pragmatic with my thinking. I'm very, very realistic with where I think the industry is going. And right now we have a conflict between the climate initiative to lower our dependence on, on diesel, okay? And, and, and identify with those newer technologies. And in many cases, hydrogen, you know, renewables, not so much of a blue ocean because it's been out there for a long, long time, but there are exploratory uh, initiatives right now from companies that are looking at LNG, um, methanol as fuel, looking at even ammonia, as fuel, which was identified as one of the many uh, fuels that the Carnot generator is expecting to be able to burn to produce uh, cheaper energy into the future. And I, I think when we're talking about a company like Hylion uh, and these other companies like Nikola, uh, hyzon has got some other problems going on, and I have not done my due diligence to say one way or the other uh, on whether or not those accounting uh, missteps are, are worth noting. But I think to come out of this era with the technology that we have on these companies that are really marching forward on this initiative to try to meet the uh, reciprocation piece of what I think is a par paradigm shift that is inevitable, which speaks to why I'm invested in this company. And for full disclaimer and disclosure, I, I do the best I can to try to let viewers uh, truly understand <clears throat> that I'm a share owner in the company. There's a lot of people that you'll meet with a lot bigger positions than myself in the Discord group. If you want to rub shoulders with those folks, they're great, great people. Um, they care about this initiative. And 
that they're like me, they're investors in this company. So they're invested in the story, they're invested in the management, they're invested in all those intangibles that I talk about that may not happen tomorrow. Okay. We're not just going to slam the door on the diesel um, industry um, overnight. With that said, some of the deaf initiatives and some of the exhaust scrubbings, I can validate that stuff. It's really, really hard on the machinery. And there's been some suggestions out in the community to say, look, I, is diesel dead as far as trying to maintain that mechanical efficiency and really dependability? I, I think that's the big hang up with going away from uh, diesel is I'm a staunch believer in the dependability of diesel and so is industry, okay? Um, and so you've got all these people out there suggesting that we have to go green, go green, go green. And industry saying, hold on, we're not going to let go of what has been tried and true as a dependable um, element of our uh, method uh, of, of um, transporting goods from point A to B, point B until you can prove to me something. And a lot of those prove it points, Thomas Healy talks about all the time, and they fall on deaf ears, especially in the stock market. But I'm not so, I'm not so concerned about that. I don't know if I can't put my thumb on the pulse that there are things at play right now to suggest that maybe there's some people who don't want to see highly on succeed. And I'm not even talking about the short sellers. <clears throat> the only investors in Hyleon now that have made any money have been short sellers. And short sellers predominantly would not have a vested interest in seeing the company succeed, rather identify weak spots in the company's trajectory, uh, especially to the downside, to profit from that. Um, and that is fair. Um, that is the stock market and that is how it works. But you know, the initiatives that Hylion has going on right now certainly don't suggest that the company should be where they are, uh, because I feel like now with what we saw, and we're going to get into it a second with the Arizona power trial that they did, um, Hylion is right there at the precipice. And it, it's going to be that decision point to say, look, companies are going to move in a different direction. They're not going to pick this up. Um, I don't foresee that happening. I absolutely don't. I think this idea is just too good to really not be looked upon as a, a, a slam the door on diesel. <laughs> Although there's only one of the products that Hylion has that actually still run on diesel and, and that's the diesel hybrid EX1. But um, you know, for the most part, it is a slam dunk on diesel in the right way, it, in the right way, right? We take the powertrain and we replace that um, from, from what we've discovered to be um, outliving its life. Uh, and, and these initiatives that are putting these hampers on the mechanics of the diesel engine now only further exacerbate the discussion forward on asking ourselves, where do we expect to be in 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now when these initiatives right now are, are in its infancy? They're in the early stages of, uh, of development. And um, Hylion fits right in with that story. Uh, General Electric now is the third highest uh, share owner in the company, compliments to Silent Alert, who is absolutely a fabulous researcher. I don't know if this is coming independent from him, but certainly don't want to bite off on that uh, research that's done and shared with the grander community for your benefit, free of charge. So um, we want to make sure that we're connecting the dots here so you don't feel like if, if you're interested in following the company, irrespective of whether or not you buy stock, you're on your own there, okay? Um, you're going to find that I'm a lot more um, hard over on that dialogue to be suggestive that if you come on and you consume YouTube content and you get out of the message that you need to trip and fall into a stock the following Monday or the following week, you're missing the point. OK, you're missing the point in a big way. And furthermore, if you are succumbing to that type of pressure, you really need to go back and understand some of the fundamentals of investing. I've been doing this the, for the majority of my life. So I eat, breathe and sleep this stuff. OK, where somebody might look at the market one time a year 
I'm monitoring markets multiple times per day. It's my passion. It is my side hobby. It is what I do. So things that roll off tongue and cheek may unfortunately be perceived through social media that you need to absolutely go and buy a block of stock in this company, whether it be $100 or $10,000. All of that discussion really needs to be put to the wayside. You need to be making your decisions based on your own independent research and due diligence, because quite frankly, that's really what we're looking to do is empower the opportunity. Remember at the top of the live stream where I talked about these opportunities, and there were many that came and they went, stocks got driven down, Amazon, many, many others, they get driven down on the onset. Actually, Facebook at the time, now newly minted Meta, uh, working on the Metaverse was also subject to that. And people don't understand and look back, you could have picked up, you know, Meta or Facebook at the time for 18 bucks. You, you could have picked up Apple you know, for, for those low anemic prices. And it's been a habitual cycle of these companies that come to the public forefront and they're looked at and, and, and vetted pre-revenue or right at that point of, of breakout where they start to actually generate revenue for themselves. And you get in on the ground floor. Once that churn starts, then everybody starts to, uh, you know, hype by the stock as it goes up. That game is is really it's really equalizing uh, across the playing field and for those retail investors that don't want to just follow blindly to um, those youtube channels out there would that would just have them come on and listen to every word that they say without any type of um, understanding that they're a bunch of morons just like everybody else myself included we're all human beings trying to make the best decisions for our families and our futures don't ever think for a second that somebody has more answers than the next because they don't. Um, I have a lot of answers and can kind of talk with highly on because I've spent hours and hours in independent research. Was I paid to do that? No, I did it on my own accord, just like a lot of other of the faithful community. So I think if you get the big picture here, I think you can really inject yourself into the network of community members and not have to be on your own potentially help with accelerating that knowledge. I know Rick's in the Discord group and he answers questions very, very thoroughly. And it's a, a, you know, a kudos to Rick. He doesn't have to do that. Neither does Andreas and, and, and some of the other guys in there as well. Um, you know, some of the administrators, they're fantastic. Um, some of the independent research that were done by some of the largest shareholders in there, you'll benefit from that. And then, and then you're able to make a more educated decision for yourself on that stuff. But the Arizona testing from this week, I just want to earmark here, uh, November 9th is, is earnings. I would expect that uh, everybody, and this is something that I can tell you to do, um, mute your expectations because the earnings are not going to be robust. Um, they are going to be less than a million bucks. Where they fall, I have no idea. Um, if they come over the top with, with a number that's over a million toward that two to three million annual projected for 2022, I, you know, I, I'm going to have a fairly muted response to it, just like I always do. I always um, try to spend a little bit of time on or around earnings in the Discord group. So I'll be there just like the rest of the community members um, um, vetting dialogue, at least constructive dialogue over what we think of the quarter. If there's something to be learned about where we currently are in the evolution of the company, it's to be expected that... Um, those uh, revenue numbers that have been garnered are going to be muted at best. We have not garnered certification on a product that we cannot realize full margins on just yet. And these deposit revenues that we're achieving and, and the anemic uh, revenues that are garnered from the uh, full margins that are realized on the hybrid EX product um, are expected. Now, you know, with a new CFO, it's going to be really interesting to me to, to hear John talk about you know, uh, his review of the financials and the company and, and potentially earmark any uh, dissimilarity between uh, his evaluation and, and Sherry's, who I was um, a big fan of. I really like Sherry. Um, I like John as well. I, I, I trust that those decisions were made uh, with upper management with the best intent of the company and made. It may have been a personal choice on, on Sherry's part. And I believe that's probably a mix of both that, uh, uh, would suggest what happened there, but it'll be interesting to see John's assessment for 
um, closing out the remainder of the year as we step into Q4. Um, I've, I've always contended, and this is aimed to buffer what has been a volatile ride. I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it. It's been volatile, uh, but to be patient in what I consider to be a bridging year. And, and some people might be sick of the patience. Um, you ever notice how when you feel like you've run out of patience and then you wake up with a fresh mind and a fresh perspective and, you know, I don't know, have a cup of coffee, ch chill out a bit, <laughs> you know, and you, you re-energize in something that you wholeheartedly believe in. Um, I, I think we're amazing and very, very, um, uh, we're very, very tough. Uh, we're very resilient as people to bounce back and, and provide that necessary fortitude uh, where necessary. And trust me, my friends, it's taken perseverance on this game. And I'm right with you in the pocket. So what are we investing in? We're investing in some of the trials. And if you listen carefully to the interviews for the um, uh, Hyperchuck ERX trials that happened over um, in way of Arizona, there's um, a mountain span on there. I would imagine it's I-10. I, I, I didn't catch that from the um, from the quick video, I only reviewed it once and I didn't review it multiple times, but I thought the engineers uh, that were uh, talking about the process and wearing, where, we, where they were in the evolution spoke about this being an actual proof test of a lot of the engineering specs that have already gone into the unit to be duplicated thousands and thousands of times over. That's why people who look at this and they'll say, well, they don't have a product really they get these prototypes dialed in and they're sure as shit going to have a product um and i you know this verification that they're doing i'm super excited about it i'm super excited i'll i'll wait if they, these shares are ever going to go up no problem i'll continue to be patient on what these guys are doing because i can't see anything other than their uh, progress forward uh, is ongoing uh, so how can i how can i be critical of that um, with the ability to kind of look back and say, where have these guys, where have they been and, and where are they now? It kind of sets up the, the game field to um, those savvy investors like myself who would suggest that maybe next year we're in a different position. Now the stock up 12 and a half percent in the week did so very quietly. Um, they are in quiet period here with the earnings coming up on November 9th. And, you know, a jump of 13% in the stock is a, a week. And some would suggest, look, if you do, have destroyed value from, you know, 99%, what's a few percent? I, th I think it all speaks to where we are currently. And you have two choices. Either you can judge the stock based on where it's been, or you can do what a prudent investor does. And that is reset, recalibrate the uh, criterium every day. You want to reset the criterium and recalibrate every week, every month. Um, dare I say every year? Ah, I don't know. A lot can happen. And I'm intrigued by the story. So I like to monitor the story every day. That's just me. Um, so I reset my calibration and expectations for the stock every single day. Um, and make no mistake about it, friends, if you want to take a page out of my playbook, stop looking in the past all the time. Okay. I don't believe in fortune telling. I don't believe in telling the future. However, I do believe in deja vu. I've had it myself. It's the idea that we can put things together in our mind in, in a way that can somewhat forecast where things could potentially be into the future. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so fascinated with stock market investing, because you take a company like Hylion and you put together these small pieces like the fleet trial and they broke up the fleet trial in a way that would take a lower payload, a uh, higher volume uh, type of uh, situation here, right? So there's other factors that come into play there. There's, there's air draft, um, there's air restriction, right? For those higher loads uh, by volume, but lower uh, by weight. Uh, so how the chassis reacts um, under less of a demand you know, how the efficiency changes, how many times does the generator kick on? Think about the myriad of data points that these engineers are gathering on this unit uh, by putting it into that rigor and then a mid-tier load with probably less air drag, uh, but a much more higher density in, in the volume. And then finally, uh, an 82,000, I think is what it was, 82,000 on the payload 
um, to go up one of the steepest hills. I, I think Nicola was boasting that they were going to try to attempt the grapevine out in California on I-5. If anybody's ever taken that route, they know as much as me how crazy it is. I was broke down with my Mustang <clears throat> on the grapevine because it overheated. So I had to pull over and, and put some bottled water in it to, to cool her down to continue to go. But I never heard the results of those those findings. Those are the types of rigor that these companies that are boasting to be able to enter into class eight space and, and the, the demand that exists. <clears throat> and now, I don't mean to suggest that going up a hill is by any means proof of concept, but there was a comment in the, um, in the interview that would suggest that they've taken a lot of the learnings in the uh, miles of validation that have already put, been put forward over the road, and they've already integrated that into the truck. The truck looks good. It sounds good. Um, it accelerates incredibly well. Um, I, I can't speak from a driver experience because I've never been in the unit, um, but I can only suggest that these guys, I don't know, it, it's as if they're being told not to be too excited when they're under interview on these products that are just downright exciting. And that's the unabated um, you know, fifth that, that I can actually bring forward here for you guys and, and, and talk about how exciting this opportunity is. If these guys can pull this off, it will absolutely be um, what, one of the most amazing achievements by Thomas Healy, who um, was the youngest and quickest billionaire um, to make that status, only to have it retract a little bit here with the company retraction and, and, and the consolidation that's going on right now. Um, there is some accumulation of shares at the institutional levels. We know that, again, if you're interested in following the story, um, I'd encourage you to plumb into some of those pipelines of information um, that are out there. But um, yeah, those those shot outs I've, I've made, you, you can kick me up, kick over to Twitter and just follow those people. I make it really easy so you can follow who I follow. Um, see, I'm not one of those funny people that just follow people so I can grow a mass of people. Um, it's the contrary. I don't follow anybody. Um, the people who I follow, I have utmost respect for, and most of them around the, are around the highly on opportunity. So you can just click down my follow list and follow who I follow and, and you'll have it covered. Okay. Um, the Carno update, uh, there was a, a, an awesome tweet that it was actually responded back to Thomas from one of the engineers um, up in uh, at the Cincinnati facility. Um, Thomas was up there, shared a photo of the, um, the, the 3D printing uh, uh, machine, enormous. Um, that was just part of the technology that was acquired here and just recently closed um, when they acquired the Carno generator technology um, and the um, uh, some of the in-house um, uh, talent uh, that was proprietary to General Electric and now is owned uh, um, uh, by Hylion. Uh, interesting enough uh, to suggest that uh, General Electric is accumulating shares in Hylion right now to be the third largest share owner in the company for no reason is also a probably escape to thinking, but I'll allow you to do your own due diligence on that. Um, there was some discussions this week. This week was jam-packed with information, so this will be a summary of the week's information um, that was released. If you're truly and intimately following the story, there is no shortage of information. Um, we ought to feel a little bit reprieve from a 12.5% increase. It just kind of shows where the stock market grumbles a little bit to the upside. Is it a bear market rally? I don't know. I don't really care. Um, I think this company is going to go through uh, fits and spurts. Um, I'm not looking for rapid growth right now. As a matter of fact, I, I'm prepared just like I always have been to, to, to uh, uh, give it all back anyway, um, because there's really not a whole lot that I feel in way of catalyst is going to really move the needle forward on this company. For those that know that meet will meet those catalysts, and I've discussed that in highly on videos previous to this, um, we know those will inevitably come and those will inevitably move the goalpost forward and we'll get off this $3.83 stock price, which again is a futile attempt by the institutions in this particular case to suppress a company that is going to make waves in this industry. They are going to make waves. To what extent? Well, that's the beauty of it. See, we know they're going to make an impact. And right now, as long as the, the stock can remain suppressed, it can mean that that calibration, that reset that institutions are super good at, will look at a company like this and say, at $2.85, it's worth the shot. They have all this money on the books. 
their team is kind of built out. They have a great um, uh, board of directors. Uh, they have a facility and they have established relationships with multiple players in the industry. Um, I think we need to take a second look at this. It's worth the shot here at these uh, suppressed prices, um, which has been really helped uh, driven down by an exacerbated sell-off and the grander stock market supply chain issues are still uh, at the forefront of concern. Uh, I think those should alleviate and we'll look to the November 9th call to see if there's any remedy on that front uh, from Thomas Healy, the CEO. So caught in the wild, you'll want to catch those videos. That was a really good one. Um, the earnings November 9th. And then finally, I just want to close out the video. This is going to be a little shorter this week to uh, satisfy some of my critics that would suggest that I somehow need to curtail to their schedule and offer content that um, uh, fits more into their schedule. Might I remind you of this? I don't have to do this. And my product is free of charge. And I'm busy with a lot of other projects. And this is just one of them. Enjoy it, if you will. If not, you don't have to. But what has been interesting released this week is the um, developments that are made on the renewable natural gas front, okay? And I want to leave you with this staunch um, reality that Thomas Healy has discussed uh, amongst many other things, but I think this falls on deaf ears the most is the deficiencies that we have with the infrastructure. And we are um, dealing with now uh, an administration on the Hill that finds it more politically advantageous to speak along just magically standing up all of this EV infrastructure in this company without facing the reality of how difficult that will be. Um, who will pay for it and where is the permitting gonna come from? Um, we have oligopolies in this company that um, they own their regions, um, and that is the utility district. So if you're not privy to this fact, um, I would highly suggest you fall out of your Tesla for a few moments um, and actually acknowledge that there's only so much build out that can happen based on the current infrastructure that is currently in place. Um, and I would follow on and suggest that the monetary commitment that would need to take place to add these, these um, uh, RNG, or excuse me, uh, uh, filling stations, the charging stations at these units to charge, the demands that are expected on these trucks, guys, they're, they're not possible in reality. And for a, an owner of these uh, chains of fueling stations to actually take a look at the return on investment of those proposals is just futile in nature. I just find it interesting how the rhetoric right now in the mainstream is to talk about how we're going to go 100% electric vehicles and there's no, there's no other way but that. I just traveled back last night. I drove about six and a half hours last night to get home. And I passed truck after truck after truck after truck represented by all of our favorite companies, JB Hunt, Amazon, um, Schneider, Wegman, just all, all of the big boys, right? They all run diesel. That's the reality. They all run diesel. And right now we're caught in a firestorm of disconnect between initiatives that on the surface are politically correct, but they're writing checks that their butt can't cash. Not to use the Top Gun reference, but I just, I just think we're in a very intriguing time right now and profits will be made from it in that until we wake up and start to realize the reality of what some of these initiatives cost, you know, it's funny, I started using battery uh, electric uh, power tools for, for a, a little stint there. And I got so tired of the loss of productivity so fast into a specific tasking that I actually went back to plug in. I thought, you know what, for the, for the sheer opportunity of having direct on-demand power and to have the um, anticipated output of that uh, drill or, or, or bandsaw or saw or whatever it is that I was plugging into. Um, I could pro a Sawzall, right, is a great example of something that I'll give my Milwaukee to my son when he gets older. 
but there is an inherent value there in identifying what the anticipated output of a specific um, application will be. And we just don't know those things for uh, plug-in uh, diesel electric, excuse me, just plug-in electric, BEV vehicles. We just don't know what those performance specs are going to be. Everybody's saying, yeah, we can get 500 miles. And we just had Nikola revised to the lower side, of course, right? Because we just don't know what the efficiency rate. Furthermore, it would be prudent to challenge this idea that those outputs are going to be able to stand the test of time through an anticipated uh, span of ownership, seven to 10 years, okay? Now, what's it expected to be from Hylion? At least we have color on this. I don't know how many module change outs of the batteries is gonna be necessary to get us to that seven to 10 year mark. I, I don't know. It would be a question for Thomas Healy that I would ask. He suggests that it will be easier. I agree. A modular change out is always easier. You don't need a technician to get in there and turn wrenches to adjust stuff to specs. You don't need that. You just change it out, send it back to Hylion. Uh, they refurbish the battery. They send you a new one and you're good to go. Input, plug in, and you're good to go. This is the only company that we've been provided color on understanding how they're actually even going to get to that ROI. And specifically, what type of expectation we can have if put into the rigor of the demand, uh, what kind of performance we can get out of that unit over the life of getting to that seven to 10 year evaluation of crunching those numbers finally and saying, yes, we do in fact have a bottom line TCO. We needed three module change outs. We needed six module change outs. We needed two module change outs. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's going to be interesting to understand when those recommended change outs are going to happen when we start to get a degradation of the performance of the hyper truck. And that module change out is going to bring that efficiency and performance back up to optimal again in understanding as we piece this thing together and we really start to uh, game out one what we can expect to have over a seven to 10 year life cycle of what the industry is going to expect by putting these dollars up into the investment category and taking this leap of faith into this new technology, we can really understand what those numbers are going to be projected to be. Now, the real give back is going to be after we put the highly on into the rigor of over the road transport. And, you know, th this, this is where this is the excitement for me, okay? I drove through three tunnels to get home last night, um, one of it, which was really long. It was underneath the waterway. You know, I imagine, is Hylion stepping forward and suggesting that, yes, in all hours of the night, um, in all weather conditions, in all anticipated rigor that is uh, expected to be the demand on the product, to suggest that that uh, Hylion unit can perform at a rate that's on par with what diesel delivers now. That, that for me is the excitement. And there might be a little bit of hope that they do and can and will. Um, is it proven? No, no. The second a highly on unit gets stalled out for whatever reason, for whatever fail safe failed on the rig in a tunnel, on a hill, creating backup, ends up stuck in downtown New York City or San Francisco or the like, and we start having these systemic problems to where the durability is called into question, the reliability. It's durability and reliability. And I'm invested in those two things. I believe that Hylion is going to prove out with this proof of concept that they're doing right now and trials that they're running, that this company is going to bridge that gap between expectation and reality expectation thousand mile range low fueling downtime driver experience hoteling with the apu unit etc cetera, etc cetera. higher uh, torque higher acceleration right now how much of that is going to be able to be enjoyed by the fleets out there um, in an expected situation where they're running these units they don't stop there's no downtime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, minus the rest time for the driver. That is it. These units are expected to realize 
a certain number of hours of over the road transit per year, are those numbers going to be on par with the diesel equivalent? Because that, my friends, is what we have as a status quo. Okay. And those are the same questions that I ask of Nicola. Those are the same questions that I ask of Hyzon. Those are the same questions that I ask of all of the um, CNG applications that even some of the majors are coming forward with. Are they going to perform from a reliability and a durability uh, perspective if we enter into that same expected service that we're now expecting uh, diesel to, um, to, to, to deliver on? And my friends, they do. Diesel is a phenomenal, phenomenally reliable piece of machinery that has driven the trucking and transport industry over the last hundred years. Is it safe to expect that we're at a time right now that we can start to introduce some of these new technologies and expect that we can at least find some level of equivalence in durability and reliability? Time will tell. We'll keep on generating the churn around this topic. If you're new to the channel, if you're new to the message, pipe yourself into some of these very, very real communities out there that feel like over the next 50 to 100 years, we are going to see a drastically different future into our future where it comes to the class eight space. And the transition is happening right now, my friends. And it's happening with a few very, very special companies this one I hold in the highest regard. I am a long-term investor on many other fronts, okay? But to be honest with you, this is what people want to hear. This is what people want to, to, to see, is those companies out there that are relatively unknown and would have remained unknown until they were a household name and retail investors are sitting there wondering how the hell and where were they at the time when Hylion Holdings was trading at a discount at an opportunity where you had a chance to get in on the ground floor. My friends, we are there right now. I'm buying the stock for myself. It stops and ends there. Do your own due diligence on the company, but at least come on with the story because if you care about you know, the dependability and reliability, that's one thing, but that's siding with the owners and operators. There's a whole nother thing about this thing where we're looking to relax our dependence on diesel. We're looking to lower our carbon footprint for these companies so they can start to evaluate within their specific businesses where they can actually improve upon their posture for their customers and uh, the, the very image that they ob obtain in that they need to be deemed um, a, a steward in taking the appropriate steps on this uh, initiative toward a lower um, a carbon footprint future, guys. So really appreciate you tuning in for this short fuse, man. I was able to, to dig it in in a, in a half hour that I had free in my uh, couple hours of downtime here on a transition. Uh, please be patient with the channel. Um, we are in a hiatus. I'm on a professional ob obligation right now that I uh, must attend to and will. That is my passion on the other side of the house. Uh, but for you guys that enjoy the message, I do just want to give you a sincere thank you. I appreciate the uh, uh, support on the channel. I do it for you. It's that simple. Um, I do it for me as well. I enjoy the project. I enjoy coming on and talking like we would be talking at a backyard barbecue because I think all too often YouTube is a treasure trove for somebody to come and act a fool, act in a way that does not uh, transcend themselves. Um, this does. Uh, this is what I do. Um, in a small capacity, it's great to share this one singular holding with you, and it'll be great to track the evolution of this company going forward uh, over the coming five quarters of a roadmap that I think is slowly dwindling down uh, to some major, major catalyst on the horizon. Guys, I appreciate it. Leave your comments at the bottom, subscribe to the message, and thank you so much for tuning in to the totality of the message. Good luck in your investment future. Thank you.